Hi, my name is Alex and I'm a PhD student with the Unsteady Flow Diagnostics Laboratory at EPFL. For my PhD, I study bio-inspired locomotion with a focus on insect flight. For centuries, natural flyers have inspired us with their agile and precise maneuvering. However, their wing morphology and kinematics cannot be easily implemented in human-made flying devices. In our study, we propose an optimization scheme which allows us to obtain optimal wing kinematics for a specified wing. We then analyze the underlying physical uh, characteristics and find uh, the governing parameter to scale and predict the aerodynamic forces. So let's have a look at the experimental setup. We have designed and built a mechanical flapping wing device which is activated by two motors at the top. They control the stroke and the pitch axis of the wing. At the wing root, we installed a force and torque transducer which records the aerodynamic forces experienced by the wing throughout the motion. Additionally, we have a PIV measurement system which allows us to capture the flow field around the wing for each experiment. So how does our experimental data look like? We have the time-resolved pitch kinematics and angle of attack. We have the lift and power coefficient recorded by the force transducer. And we have the leading edge vortex circulation extracted from the flow field images you see to the right. So how do we obtain the optimal pitch kinematics? We implemented an optimization scheme which tries different kinematics on the experimental setup and evaluates their performance based on the aerodynamic forces we record. Then the kinematics are evolved over successive generations until the kinematics that achieve highest lift or highest efficiency are found. So let's look at the optimization results we get. Here we see the Pareto front which describes the trade-off between efficiency and lift coefficient for all found kinematics. The majority of the kinematics are at the center of the Pareto front and feature a trapezoidal-like structure. The higher lift producing kinematics have a lower pitch angle which translates to a higher angle of attack while also featuring a minima just before uh, mid-stroke. The more efficient kinematics have a sinusoidal shape which means they rotate almost throughout the entire cycle and reach very high pitch angles or low angles of attack. In order to understand what separates and connects the pitch angle kinematics to the aerodynamic forces and the flow structures, we have co to compare the different cases with one another. Here, we are going to see three different kinematics. One for highest lift, one of the center kinematics, and the most uh, hovering efficient kinematics. We see from the lift and power data that higher lift coefficient is achieved by a higher lift maxima, but also substantially higher power maxima. From the leading edge vortex circulation, we can learn two things. One is, for higher lift production, we produce a leading edge vortex of higher circulation, but also the more efficient the kinematic is, the later in the cycle the maximum of the circulation occurs. In order to understand how the leading edge formation is coupled to the aerodynamic force production, we have to look at its formation process. The leading edge vortex is fed by circulation shed from the leading edge of the wing. In our case, for the hovering motion, it consists of two components, one from the stroke motion and another one from the rotation motion of the wing. For a certain spanwise position, we can then calculate the shear layer velocity with the following equation. If we integrate this value, we also obtain the advective time, sigma, which can also be interpreted as the distance the leading edge traveled or the leading edge vortex formation time. Here we see the shear layer velocity for all our kinematics. For higher lift kinematics, this Shear layer velocity follows the sinusoidal stroke profile closely, reaching a peak of around mid-stroke. The more efficient the kinematics become, the shear layer velocity is reduced, 
reaching an almost trapezoidal-like profile for the most efficient kinematics. To scale and predict the circulation and aerodynamic forces, we are going to extract the shear layer maxima from these graphs and apply it to our data. For the leading edge vortex circulation, we see that normalizing it by the shear layer velocity instead of the stroke average velocity, the circulation maxima collapsed to one timing around four advective times and a magnitude of about three for all observed kinematics. After the maximum is reached for the higher lift achieving kinematics, the circulation drops for the rest of the cycle. For the most efficient kinematics, we can see that the cycle actually ends at a formation time of around four, which is consistent with other observations for bio-inspired propulsors, which have an optimal vortex formation. We can also apply the same scaling we previously applied for the circulation to the lift data we obtained. Here we see the lift coefficient for all Pareto optimal kinematics. The same trend we observe for the circulation can be observed here. All maxima align on one um, non-dimensional time, around three, and reach the same magnitude of around five when normalized by the shear layer velocity. In order to predict the aerodynamic efficiency, we have to also apply the same scaling to the power coefficient. Here we see the lift coefficient and the power coefficient both scaled in previous session by the Pareto front distribution and also by scaling it with the shear layer velocity previously discussed. We see that when scaled by the shear layer velocity, all lift and power coefficients collapse onto one line. If we now build the ratio between the two, we see that the same holds true for the aerodynamic efficiency where all Pareto optimal solutions collapse roughly onto one line around 0.5. In summary, I want to tell you the three main parts of the study. First, we find optimal kinematics and tie the leading edge vortex circulation to the aerodynamic forces on the wing. Then, we identify the shear layer velocity as the governing parameter for the leading edge vortex circulation as well as the aerodynamic performance on the wing. Last but not least, we found that the most efficient kinematics end their stroke cycle exactly when the leading edge vortex circulation has a non-dimensional time of 4, which has been previously found for vortex-inspired uh, propulsors. Thank you for listening to my talk, and I look forward to meeting you at APS.